know, 2000 Buddha fans have got to go there and hopefully, hopefully roars onto a victory, but you know what it is, it's, it's hard to see now. I can't take it at Norwich. I can't stand Norwich. It's that club that just irritates me. Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Yes, I'm back inside of one of my granddad's sheds. Again, every side of the house is getting used. One of the other sheds is getting used, so I thought, right, I'll pop back into this one. Basically, we're here to discuss the next Borough manager. Who will be coming in the door? What will be happening? Now, it's been nearly two weeks, I believe, since Wilder was sacked. Leo is still into the manager. He will be taking the team in charge for Saturday against Blackburn Rovers. By the way, I watched the Blackburn Rovers game last night. They were very, very poor. So, we're getting... I expect a better Blackburn against us on Saturday though because of course we don't really have a proper manager with proper tactics and what have you but listen we're all getting behind Leo again brilliant we've heard all kinds of names come through the grapevine the last couple of weeks I've heard Sean Dyche Michael Carrick Rob Edwards Leo Perkovic Lee Catamore Steve Agnew there's been all sorts of names there's a duo a D that have sent my brain west do not do that to me but I do not bring them to in as manager and of course assistant I get into that in a little bit but from what I've seen, from what I've heard, Rob Edwards, I got told a few days ago that he was pretty much written on the wall to be the next butter manager. That has clearly been taken away and that will not be happening. Michael Carrick, now for me, his heart's not in it and I will explain what I mean by that. So, Michael Carrick was interviewed by Middlesbrough and I also believe that he actually met up with Steve Gibson again yesterday. But basically, Michael Carrick doesn't know if he wants to get back into football at the minute. So for me, that's a manager, his heart isn't inside the job, he doesn't really know, he's a bit up and down with it. He doesn't know if he wants to fully commit himself to a job. If you give him the job, he may take it just for the wage alone or what have you. He might think, oh, short-term deal, I'll be into the end of the season. Fans are not looking for that kind of manager. And for a football club, we're definitely looking for that kind of manger. Or at least I hope we're not looking for that kind of manager. Just to get us over to the end of the season. To go through all this saga again inside the summer. If Michael Carrick's heart is not fully into the job, do not give him the job. Right? He may be brilliant. He may be a good manager. He might have a little bit of experience here and there. What have you. Although I don't believe he's managed anybody of a high level. His football intelligence might still be up there, but listen, if the guy's heart isn't in the job, don't give him it. It's very, very simple. So, I know you went and met with Steve Gibson again yesterday. Like I said before, if his heart's not in the job, you don't give him the job. But that's the bit for me that I think Michael Carrick, he excited me at first, but if your heart's not in it, I'd rather you not take the job. As me, in my own opinion, as a fan of Middlesbrough Football Club, I would rather you not take the job. I actually had a little look at the Sky Bet sort of odds and whatever for the export manager. I'm going to read through them now so you guys can get a bit of more of a clear picture. Who's favourited, who's close to be favourited and who's completely out the window. Now for me, it would appear like Leo is probably not going to get the job. He's in a 14-1 to 1 at the moment. I've actually got the sheet in front of me, so I'll obviously read it off there. Sean Dice comes in at 18-1. to 1. Leo Perkovic, of course, is 14-1. to 1. Rob Edwards, 5-1. to 1. Michael Carrick, 9-4. to 4. And Lee Catamore... <clears throat> I will repeat myself. Lee Catamore is in a 4-6. to 6. He is slamming on the wall. He is odds on to become the next Borough manager, Lee Catamore. And who's going to be his assistant, you may ask? Steve Agnew. <clears throat> I don't want to sound negative, right? I don't want to be negative on this channel. I love the football club. I really, really do. I love ex-players that have done well for us. I love players that, you know, adore Middlesbrough still. I love all that. I don't love that partnership, though. I'm sorry. I, I, I just cannot see that happening in a positive way for the football club if you appoint Lee Catamore as Borough manager with no disrespect Lee what does he know about the championship what does he know fully as a footballing manager it's like putting Jonathan Woodgate back in there and I loved Woodgate by the way Woodgate is one of my most favourite players at Middlesbrough he really really was even at Real Madrid and what have you he was still one of the most favourite defenders ever but he came to a job not knowing the championship very well he played in it don't get me wrong he played in the Premier League he played in the championship came to the manager's job didn't do very well. We went to Bournemouth, did all right. But like I say, Middlesbrough, it didn't end very well for him. Lee Catamore, similar sort of position. He works with the kids, I believe, at Middlesbrough. If he gets a job, what does he know? Where else can he take us? What's his identity? What's his philosophy and all that kind of stuff? And then I hear the rumour of Steve Agnew to be his assistant. I do not want that man anywhere near the football club. Steve Agnew, no chance. I was there, by the way, a whole city when he said that apparently he knew Hull... Inside out, we took the lead within the first 30 seconds and got beat 4-2. Ali Maguire made it 4, and they beat us 4-2. I was there that night. That, that pretty much confirmed relegation. That came from a man, by the way, 
Like I said, apparently New Hull inside out. We got absolutely trounced by them on a cold night in Hull. Got beat 4 2 and outside relegation. Thanks, Steve. I don't want that man on the bench. I don't want him inside the dugout. I don't want him inside the football club. No chance. I'm sorry if I sound negative, but I don't want him. I just do not understand. I wonder if we've gone from Michael Caddick to, the, of course, the last 24 hours being Lee Catamore, written on the wall, odds on, to be the next border manager. Have we honestly stooped that low? Have we actually fallen that far that we can't appoint a decent manager nowadays? How much money have we got to spend on the manager? Listen, I don't know. I don't know how much yearly wage we've got to obviously pay a manager. I don't know how much of a pay off Chris Wilder got. I don't know how much he was on a year. I don't know all that. But what I do know, this strikes disaster. If you bring in Lee Catamole and alongside him, it's his pal Steve Agnew, it, honestly, it's disaster. I don't want to see us go to League One. I don't want to see us go down there. I don't want to see us inside this bottom three. I don't even want to see us a place above the bottom three. But at the minute, that's where we are. At the minute, things aren't going right for us. I'm sorry if I sound negative. Lee Catamo does not give me any sort of excitement going forward. He really, really, I'm sorry, Lee, you really don't, mate. Go and get some more experience. Go and manage a team in League 1, League 2, somewhere around that sort of level. A bit like Rob Edwards, but of course it didn't really work out for him. But listen, what for the manager every 10 minutes? You know what I mean? That's just the way they go with that football club. Rob Edwards might actually be an half decent manager. What for just want to sack him straight away, like they do with everyone? Lee Catamore, no. For me, it's a big no. He cannot come in as a borough manager. He, I just do not know where we're going to go with him if he comes in. And especially with his assistant, Steve Agnew. I'm sorry, guys, but if I sound negative, I sound negative. This whole manager saga is frying everyone's brain. I think it's winding everybody up at this point, especially when that kind of news is coming out. We're an ambitious football club. We've got a lot of desire. We've got a lot about us as a football club. But when you appoint managers that haven't even managed inside the championship, never mind managed anywhere, apart from like the kids inside the younger sort of academies, it just doesn't spell goodness to me that. It doesn't spell positivity. Don't get me wrong, listen, if he came in, everyone had to get behind him. Even if we agreed with it or we didn't, even if we were excited or we weren't. You know what I mean? We're all Butter fans at the end of the day. We honestly see Butter do well, but come on. Honestly, come on. We need to sort this out. If that's the best we can do, is leak out them all. You start questioning a lot about the football club, and I don't want to start doing that. I really, really don't. But at the moment... It just doesn't look good for us, does it? And to say, what are your thoughts and opinions? Leave us out in the comment section. I'm sorry if I sound negative. Sorry if you don't agree with what I've said. I just want the club to be in the right position. I just want us to go inside the right direction. But if you're appointing managers like you can't who haven't never ever managed inside the championship or anybody of a high level, I just don't understand what on earth the ambition and desire is. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I'm hoping that obviously, you know, we do appoint somebody with something about them. We've obviously managed at a bit of a high level before. But as I say... We'll wait and see. If you guys have enjoyed, as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.